Hey guys, welcome back to Handmade Home. I'm Hester and today I got a very exciting video for you. I love this project. I think it might be my favorite build of the year so far. And it's all about play areas in gardens. My little girl Kiki, who's one and a half, loves playing in the garden and I really want to give her her own little space in our garden for her to play and she loves a sand pit. So have a look at what I came up with for Kiki to play. So this is my garden. As you can see, it's not big. It's not small either, it's perfectly sized. And in the back left corner, you can just see the little house I built Kiki. It's built on a part of my decking that was just used for storage. There's uh, an old wall here and as you can see it's a bit of rubble on the floor. Best thing is, this spot is always in the shade, so perfect for a child playing area. As you can see, my border is sort of sticking out. It just has a rubble in, so I need to find a way as well to cover this up to make it all nice and safe. There's a few more things that are specific for my build, so I need to make sure it's not too wide or too high. So I started drawing, and once I came up with a design I really like, I ordered my timber, which is an 18mm thick plywood I can use outside, and I started building. Let me show you how you can make your own playhouse with a sandpit. Every garden needs different measurements. And I'm gonna post exact measurements I used on my website, hestershandmadehome.com, so please have a look there. But what you're gonna need is plywood, and you're gonna need sheets. I like to have my sheets cut to size in the timber yard, because it saves me so much work. You're gonna need a back panel, two side panels, two for the roof, and one for the lid of your sand pit. And on the back panel, you're gonna draw out a pitch shape of a nice pointy roof. Then I cut one of these sides out using your jigsaw. Unfortunately, I've done most of my building when the baby was asleep, so I didn't want to wake her up from her nap with a power tool, so I used my hand saw instead. And once I cut one side out, I just used that as a template to make sure the other side is exactly the same angle. Just place it on top and trace a little line. Cut this one out as well, yeah, and please use your jigsaw for this. And uh, sand the edges nice and smooth. As you can see, I do this handheld again. Then you're gonna glue the side panels to this back panel. I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue here. Just apply uh, a layer, press it together, and I'm using my uh, nail gun just to keep these places nice and stuck together. Just a nail every 10 centimeters will do. Do the same on the other side. Here you can see both sides are glued and stapled to the back panel. And then just a little look to see if it actually fits in the spot. It fits just fine. So I'm gonna paint it with this outdoor paint. It's Cuprinol and it's Urban Slate. I gave it one coat, let it dry, and then gave the whole thing a second coat of paint. Now it's time to build your sand pit frame. I'm using decking boards, and my sand pit's gonna be a meter long and 50 centimeters wide. I'm gonna measure the planks and cut them to size. We're gonna screw them together to create this rectangle shape. As you can see, mine is just wedged in between the sides and a weird little um, place I need to cover up. I'm going to pre-drill the holes and screw your rectangle together. Once you've got this in place, I'm building a little deck around mine because I need to cover up that rocky place. So I'm going to measure the boards, cut them to size. As you can see here, I build a little frame which is really similar to the frame of the sand pit. And you're going to screw these together. I'm going to also attach it to the sand pit frame just to make a nice and secure structure. As you can see here, I put a plank on the back of my decking and I had a little try to see if the lid of the sand pit fits perfectly. That's the same size as the frame, so a meter by 50 centimeters. Then I measured up how big my planks need to be for my decking and I cut these from pallet wood. Use these T hinges to attach the lid to the back plank. The lid's mainly there to stop animals peeing into the sand, like cats and foxes, and also to keep the sand dry when it's raining. It's attached, let's see if it works. But lift on the lid, you can see I made a little boo-boo. I actually didn't think about it. If I lift the lid, of course, there's a little gap there. You can see the rocks underneath. But yeah, fear not, it's easily fixed. I just lifted the lid and screwed in a plank underneath where the gap is. I just screwed it in from the inside of the frame, as you can see here. So yeah, little fixture there. Have a little look. As you can see, the little gap is all fine and everything is in place. So now it's time for a good sand. Make sure all the edges are really nice and soft because you want to be safe for your children to play in. And then I gave the whole frame two coats of paint. It's the same paint as Cuprinol in Urban Slate. 
Here's my whole build just after the second coat of paint. I didn't bother doing a second coat on the inside of the main building because it's going to be covered up with wallpaper anyway. The inside of the lid is going to be a blackboard. So I'm using blackboard paint here from Rust-Oleum. Just gave it one coat, a little brush and let it dry. You need to make a liner for inside the sand pit just to make sure all the sand actually stays in the sand pit. Originally I used a root cloth for this, you just cut it to size, it's a double layer of root cloth and then using a stapler you just staple it in place just underneath the edge of the inside of your sand pit frame. I realized a bit later on though that my sand kept getting wet and I didn't understand why but my decking isn't very level so with heavy rain all the water just went underneath my sand pit making my sand very wet so I replaced this with a, a tarp lining so mine's completely waterproof now. A lot more daylight as you can see it's the next day and it's time to measure for the roof. Just have a little check to see how long your roof needs to be. Then cut another 18 millimeter plywood plank to size and make sure the edges are all nice and smooth. Before applying your roof it's really good to give it a coat of paint because it's so much easier to paint it now than actually having to sit in the house. Then you're going to apply your wood glue to the back of the house and you're going to staple your roof in place on the back of your house and on the sides. To give your roof a little bit more strength I just want to use a corner bracket. Unfortunately you have to bend it open because the course a 90 degree angle won't do. So just bend it slowly open and you're going to screw it in place as the far end corner of your roof just to give it a bit more stability. Then you're going to apply a little bit of wood glue in between your roof slats because here is where your dowel needs to go for your little flag, little flagpole. So I glued the dowel in place, as you can see here, and I gave it a lick of paint as well, and I gave the roof a second coat of paint. Now it's time for the fun stuff. I'm gonna add a vinyl wallpaper on the inside of the playhouse. I thought vinyl would actually be good for outdoors. It is a wallpaper from Bonnie and Bold Wallpaper, which is bbwallpaper.co.uk, and I cut the wallpaper to size, and then you slowly peel the backing paper off and with a credit card I pushed all the air bubbles out. Just go nice and slow when you do this. And then when you come to the end you just use a craft knife to cut the little bit of excess paper off. And it's time for some finishing touches. This is just a piece of pellet wood. I painted the same color. And with two little brackets you're gonna screw the bracket to the plank and then to the back wall of your little playhouse. To hide the brackets because you don't really want to see those, I'm just using leftover pieces of the vinyl wallpaper. To keep the lid securely in place when Kiki's playing in a sand pit, I'm attaching these D-rings to the inside of the lid. You normally use these to hang pictures. You're going to drill a little hole in the back wall and screw in a cup hook. So the lid is nice and secure as you can see here. I also added a hook to the sand pit when it's not in use. Just for a bit of fun, I thought I'd add a little bit of fake grass to the rooftop, create a little living room. I just hammered this in place with a few nails. Now all I need to do is add the flag to the flagpole and Kiki's playhouse is ready! She can't wait to get in!
love this house so much and I think by using the vinyl wallpaper on the inside of the house it gives more of an indoorsy feel and it gives a really nice pop of colour against all the grey I have in the back of the garden. If you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up because it really helps boost my ratings here on my Handmade Home YouTube channel. Have a look at all my other videos and for more specific details on this build like measurements and the kind of products I used or if you want to see all the other things I make have a look on my website hestershandmadehome.com for all the information. I'll be back soon with a new video and I really hope to see you then.